Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about capital structure, more specifically, something called MM1, which is short for Modigliani and Miller proposition number one. Modigliani and Miller are two very famous uh, financial economists who essentially asked the following question. Can we structure capital so that our whack is minimized and therefore the value of our assets or the value of the firm is maximized saying one is the same as saying the other and what they ended up saying is that no under certain assumptions capital structure does not matter that's a very strong statement what they were saying is that look it doesn't matter whether you fund the asset 100% with equity 50% with equity 30% with equity the worth of the asset is going to remain the same or if you're talking about a firm the worth of the firm is going to remain the same in other words value of the levered firm VL stands for value of the levered firm they said that value of the levered firm is going to be the same as the value of the unlevered firm unlevered firm is a firm that has no debt right so if you had no debt and the firm were entirely equity funded this would be an unlevered firm they said look first understand how much the firm is worth when it is completely unlevered it has no debt and then they said even if you go from 100 percent equity to say maybe 30 percent 40 percent debt and 60 percent equity now you're going to be a levered firm nonetheless the value that you are going to have is going to be the same this is the same thing as saying that as you change capital structure, weighted average cost of capital remains the same. And so this proposition, this statement, this is commonly referred to as Modigliani and Miller proposition number one or MM1. Now, at first blush, this seems like an outrageous statement. In fact, in my experience, uh, students struggle with this quite a bit. And here's why. Uh, it is no secret that debt tends to be cheaper than equity. Imagine that you are funding a business or an investment 100% with your own hard-earned money. Let's suppose you're investing in some real estate. Now, of course, real estate is risky. You can have high cash flows or you can have low cash flows. And let's suppose based on that risk, the rate of return that I should require or my cost of equity is, uh, let's suppose, let's suppose 10%. And now a friend of yours comes along and says, wait a minute, why are you risking all your hard earned equity at a cost of 10%? Why don't you just go and uh, take some debt? Banks are uh, lending you at, uh, let's suppose 5%, you know? And so if you, instead of investing in this asset 100% with equity, why don't you go 50% with debt here and 50% with equity. And guess what? Uh, if somebody asks you and ignore taxes for the time being, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute as to why. But in this very simple example, like uh, you can see that then your cost of capital would be well 50% debt, which is 5%, and then 50% you know equity. And uh, this is gonna be something like 7.5%. So why not? have a cost of capital of uh, something like 7.5%, which will lower your cost now. And for the same uh, cash flows, you will just have a more valuable investment. And it sounds great, except that Modigliani and Miller said, you know what, that's wishful thinking because that debt is going to make your equity riskier. Why? Because now a lot of the cash flows that this property or this investment is going to generate first there are all these debt holders who are sitting ahead of you to get the cash first which means that you are second in line which means that your cash flows are going to be riskier how much riskier well under a certain set of conditions it can be shown that this cost of equity will increase to exactly 15 percent so that when you are going to do 50% of 5% and then 50% of 15%, this number is going to come out to exactly 10%, which is exactly the rate of return that you required when the asset or investment was not funded with any debt at all. Now, admittedly, Modignan and Miller made a bunch of different assumptions that need to hold for this result to be true. Uh, they assume that we live in a world in which there are no corporate taxes, they assume that we live in a world in which there are no costs of financial distress. 
They assumed a world where borrowing and lending happens at the same rate and not just that, at the same risk-free rate. Modigliani and Miller assumed that there are no information asymmetries. We live in a world in which everybody has the same information. All of these assumptions need to hold for this result to be true, MM1 to be true. Uh, Modigliani and Miller were well aware uh, of the restrictive assumptions that they were making. They called it a world with perfect capital markets. I'm sort of simplifying it by saying, you know, this is their perfect world. Uh, capital markets are in reality not perfect, but under perfect capital markets, MM1 says that capital structure does not matter. Now, there is some fancy math that they did to show this result, but actually the main intuition behind the result is a pretty straightforward. What Modigliani and Miller essentially said is that, look, assets generate financial cash flow and how the capital is structured merely dictates how that cash flow is distributed. If the asset is funded mostly with debt, then a big chunk of these cash flows is going to distribute to the debt holders and less is going to go to the equity holders. Their point was that the worth of a firm should be a function of its cash flow generating potential and not how that cash flow is distributed. In fact, they famously used uh, the example of a pizza. Like, so imagine you call Domino's and you say, hey, you know what, I'd like a pizza, please. And uh, the pizza guy says, okay, that's gonna be $20. And you're like, okay, fine. You know, please uh, put on some cheese and some meat uh, and, you know, pineapple, if that's a thing, whatever. So as you're about to hang up the phone, the pizza guy says, wait, 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 you know what? If you just pay $20, it's not going to be cut in any slices. Uh, if you give me $22, then we'll cut it in four slices. And, uh, you know, if uh, for 25 bucks, we'll cut it up in eight slices. You know, now, oh, what do you say? If you're like most people, you'd say, you know what, dude, I'm not paying extra for the slices because what really gives value to the pizza is the meat the cheese, the pineapple, whatever. So bring it to my place, you know, uncut. I have a knife at home. I am paying for the meat and the cheese. Slicing up of the pizza really doesn't matter to me. And that is exactly their point. Modigliani Miller saying is that structuring debt and equity is like slicing up the pizza different ways. All that really changes is how the cash flows are distributed. But what gives value to the assets is not the cutting up of the cash flows in slices, but the meat, or in this case, the cash flows. So capital structure in that sense does not matter for value. We can also represent these ideas graphically. So let's suppose that I'm measuring debt to equity ratio over here, and let's suppose that I'm measuring firm value here, so firm value. When there is no debt, the firm is going to have some value referred to that as VU, which is value of the unlevered firm. VU is this point, this Y intercept. As the debt to equity ratio is going to increase, the value of the firm is going to remain the same. And so VL is this line in the sense that each point on this line corresponds to different debt to equity ratios or changing capital structure. In terms of magnitude, they are the same, but please understand that VU is a point, whereas VL is the line. And saying this is the same thing as saying that the cost of capital is also unchanged as capital structure is changed. So on a separate graph, if I were to plot debt to equity ratio here, but now I'm measuring cost of capital, cost of capital over here. When there is zero debt, so the firm is completely unlevered, there is going to be some cost of capital. I am going to use the notation, and this is commonly used, I'm going to use the notation R0, R0. R0 is essentially the cost of unlevered equity. This is the cost of equity that exists when the firm has no debt. It is a cost of equity, please don't get confused. It is a cost of equity, but it is a very specific cost of equity in the sense that it is a unique point that exists only when there is no debt. And what Modigliani and Miller were saying was that, look, as you're gonna change or increase debt in the capital structure, your cost of capital is going to remain at the same level. Uh, and so this line is your weighted average cost of capital. They understood that the cost of debt is less than the cost of equity 
when the firm had no leverage. In our example, this number was initially 10%. And in our previous example, this number was 5%. And so they understood that you can borrow at a lower rate. But what they said was that as you're going to take on more and more debt and start increasing your borrowing at this cheap rate, guess what? Now cost of equity is going to start to increase. So RS represents cost of equity in general, corresponding to any amount of leverage. And so if you will have more exposure to this low cost of debt, you're also going to have some exposure to this high cost of equity so that when you take a weighted average based on this debt and equity ratio, the weighted average of these two numbers is going to come to exactly this number. WAC will not change. That essentially is Modigliani Miller proposition number one. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.